hurricane hunters flying into the eye of Irma, and we've, that's how they get a lot of the information about uh, help with predictions and the rest. Uh, I mentioned earlier we may have a chance to go live to one of those hurricane hunters, and sure enough, joining us now is Richard Henning. He's right now in one of those specialized planes and is with us by phone. He's the hurricane hunter's flight director for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. And right now, I understand you're up above this storm. Is that right? Uh, yes, sir, Shepard. We are flying at an altitude of about 42,000 feet right now, flying through the top of the storm. We're located just southeast of Puerto Rico, uh, making a counterclockwise track uh, around the eye of the storm. And what we're doing is we're dropping what we call drop zones. They're instruments that fall by parachute. Uh, it's sort of the opposite of a weather balloon. Instead of going up, these uh, these drop zones go down, and they record pressure, temperature, humidity, wind speed, wind direction, and all of that data gets fed into computer models that uh, help forecast the track of the storm. So we're not only going to fly uh, above the storm and through the top of the storm, we're also going to fly a pattern northwest of the storm through the Bahamas and east of Florida. Uh, in order to sample the environment that the system is heading towards in order to make those uh, make those drop signs and all of that data is, is fed into computer models to help get a better forecast track what what Richard have you have you noticed about this storm that you as a, a seasoned professional what stands up to you about this storm well, this is actually the strongest hurricane that I have ever seen in this part of the Atlantic. We've had uh, really nasty hurricanes in, in places like the Gulf of Mexico. We had Hurricane Wilma in the Northwest Caribbean. That was a very intense Category 5 storm. Uh, but this storm, for where it's located, it's actually really rare for a storm to be this strong out in the Atlantic Ocean. And uh, everyone in its path needs to really uh, take close heed to the warnings. One of the things about this storm is not only is it extremely intense in the center with winds in excess of 180 miles per hour, but it's growing in size. So you have hurricane force winds that are extending out uh, at least 50 miles from the center, and the uh, the eye is about 25 miles across. So if you throw in hurricane winds of 50 miles on either side of that, you're talking about a 100 and 125 mile swath of hurricane force sustained winds. So it's a very large hurricane. Richard, one of the things we know about these storms is as the eye shrinks, which it does from time to time, you said it's now about 25 miles across, the winds normally strengthen. Are we seeing any signs to give us any suggestion about which way that part's going? Not right now. Uh, both uh, the NOAA P-3 aircraft, uh, which is the plane that we fly uh, down at low altitude right through the teeth of the eye wall, as well as the Air Force C-130 planes, uh, both of those aircraft have indicated an eye of generally between 20 and 25 miles, uh, so we haven't seen that uh, contraction yet. And, and this, well, the scary thing is, is the storm has gotten as strong as it has without that really uh, uh, that that contraction that you talked about, where. Uh, where the uh, where the eye shrinks and the eye wall shrinks and all the energy concentrates towards the center, it's uh, it's actually it reminds me more of Katrina. Katrina mm. had a uh, had a wide eye, had about a 20 to 20 mile eye when it was at its most intense in the uh, in the Gulf of Mexico. It never got one of those tiny eyes that you see sometimes. Another thing we watch for is eye wall replacement cycles. Every few days that seems to happen, especially on these big storms. Anything like that showing up for you? Yes, uh, that has been one of the trademarks of, of this storm. It has had, golly, uh, probably about a half a dozen eye wall replacement cycles already. 
and you expect to see that in a in a very intense hurricane. It doesn't like to stay in a stable uh, state for for very long. It doesn't. Well, we've lost the connection. Uh, it's pretty amazing that we could have a phone connection anyway from the top of a storm of this size.